Yeah, good morning, everyone. Welcome uh, to our online students. Thank you all for joining class. And also welcome to our in-person students and uh, to our e-learning students who will be listening to the lecture later on. Uh, welcome to class. We'll, um, we'll begin. We are going to study chapter two today and um, hope this will help some of you who are struggling to find out what is God's call, what God's purpose for your life is. So we will be looking at several scripture passages that will help you. And also we'll study the nine guideposts or the nine pointers or signs that will help you to identify God's calling for your life and God's purpose for your life. Are you ready? Yes? Okay. Um, so let's begin. Uh, can somebody lead us in prayer, please? Quickly, can somebody pray? I can, I can pray, Pastor. Sure, Pooja. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Almighty Father, we come before you, God Master. Lord, thank you for this morning, God Master. Lord, we worship you, Master. We thank you, Father God. Thank you for this time, Lord Master. You have given us, Master God, to listening to your word, Master. Lord, we come to your holy presence, Master. Whatever we listen, God Master. Lord, let your word come from you, God Master. Lord, speak to us, your, your servant, God Master. Yes, Lord, speak to us, Master God. Open our spiritual ear, God Master, to hear your voice more clearly, God Master. Father, have mercy upon us, our God Master. We cover the blood of Jesus each and every person upon this time, Lord Master. Yes, Lord. And we dedicate to you, Master, this time, oh God Master, today. Steady, God Master. Yes, Father, Pastor, and all the students, oh Master. And we break the power of darkness, every hindrance, every obstacle upon us, upon the students, upon the pastor, upon your word, oh Master. That is that is stopping us, oh Master. Lord, to not to understand, we cancel in Jesus' name. Father God, help mercy, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Touch our heart, O oh Master. Lord, open our mind, open our heart, O oh God, Master. Yes, Lord, Master. Open your ear, O oh God, Master. Lord, help us to hear your word, to understanding your word, O oh God, Master. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We praise you. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pooja. So um, in chapter one, we study that God has a plan and a purpose for our lives okay and we know that his plan and purpose for our life is not a mystery he reveals that to us but how do we find out god's plan and purpose for our life so we'll be looking at nine eight no nine guideposts signposts um the you know next few weeks which will help us to understand and design on uh, God's plan and purpose for our lives. Now, before we start looking at those nine guideposts, which is uh, mentioned on page number uh, five in your textbook, page number five, you see those nine guideposts. Uh, before we start studying that, we will just look at a few scripture passages that will establish the fact that, you know, we can know God's will now sometimes we live like as you say we cannot know god's will we cannot find god's will god's will for our life is a mystery or you know we walk aimlessly in life we walk sometimes so lost thinking that you know we don't know where to go what to do okay but god's word tells us that he has that he's a god who reveals his plans and his will for our lives and we saw uh, a new numerous scripture passages uh, last week in the two hours. We look at a few more and then we'll move on to the nine guideposts. Okay. So let's uh, first look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. It's in your um, textbooks. Ephesians 5, 17. We are in lesson two, page number eight. Okay. Can somebody read that, please? Ephesians 5, 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of God is. Amen. It says, do not be unwise, but understand the will of God. Okay. So can we understand God's will? Yes, because it says here, don't be foolish. You can understand God's will. So the Bible tells us, uh, you know, what the will of God is. And it, um, you know, he, it tells us that can we understand God's will? Can God's will be understood? 
yes, God's will for our lives can be understood. We can understand God's will for our lives. We can know for sure what is God's will for our lives. Look at Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Paul is praying for the believers at the church at Colossae. And look at what he's saying in his prayer. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not hear to pray for you and to ask that you may fill with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every work and in increasing uh, in the knowledge of God. Strength, strengthened with all my all might according to his glorious power of all patience and long suffering with joy. Amen. So here Paul is saying that you know um, uh, for the reason we also since the day we heard about the church at Colossae, we do not cease to pray for you. Cease means what? We do not stop praying for you. So when Paul is praying this prayer for the church at Colossae, uh, is he expecting his prayer to be answered? Yes, you know, he's expecting his prayer to be answered, okay? So safe to assume that Paul is expecting his prayer to be answered. And so what is his prayer for the church at Colossae? What is he saying? The first thing what he's saying, what is his prayer? Yes, they may be filled with the knowledge of his will, okay? So Paul is praying for the church that they may be filled with the knowledge of his will. So even as Paul is praying this prayer for the church at Colossae, you can also pray this prayer for yourself. For those of you who want to know God's will for your life, you can pray and say, God, fill me with the knowledge of your will. There's nothing wrong in praying that prayer. And when you pray that prayer, do you expect God to answer? Will God answer? Yes. So it's possible for God's people to be filled with the knowledge of his will. And then what else does he say? Then he says, be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So what does it mean? You require wisdom and spiritual understanding to know God's will. Yes, we can know God's will, but many of us are not able to know God's will. Swapnil, Jeevan, can you please mute your mics? Swapnil, can you please mute your mic, please? Yeah, ma'am. Jeevan, can you mute your mic, please? Jeevan, can you please mute your mic? I think they just attend class, but they're not there. Hmm. Okay, so it's, um, you know, to know God's will, you need to, you know, be filled with all uh, spiritual wisdom and knowledge, okay? So to be filled with God's will, you know, what are the things that you need to do? You need to cooperate with God. There are things that will happen that you need to do if you need to be filled with the knowledge of God's will is you need to be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding to know his will. And also when you uh, are filled with the knowledge of his will, there are some things that will happen in your life. So what are some of the things that will happen in your life? Look at verse 10. What does it say? Yes, Jeevan, I muted it for you and that's why it's mute. Otherwise, it was not muted. I muted it for you and hence, uh, you know, it got, you got muted. Okay. Yes, can somebody tell me what it says in verse 10? That you may walk worthy of Lord. Who yes, is you may him. walk worthy of the Lord. Okay, walk worthy of the Lord means what? Walk in a way or live in a way that's honoring God. You know, that is, uh, you know, de totally dependent on God. So you can walk worthy of the Lord. You can walk in a way that's honoring God when you know his will so when you know his will you can walk in a way that is honoring god the second thing fully pleasing yes you will be well pleasing to 
him. Okay, so if you want to be pleasing to the Lord, you have to know his will. Okay, so if you want to be pleasing to the Lord, it's dependent on knowing him and his will. Thirdly, you want to be fruitful in every work. How many of you want to be fruitful? Yes, all of us like to be fruitful. If you want to be fruitful in every good work, then it's dependent on what? What is it dependent on? Knowing his will. Okay. So, you know, many of us are working, 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 and you see no fruit. Okay. Or you're doing business or you're work, doing a job and you don't see any fruit and you're wondering you know, why is there no fruit? Then you have to go back and start from the beginning and you need to know whether it's God's will for you to be in that place or not, okay? So if you're bearing fruit, then you know that you are in the center of God's will, okay? Because when you are in God's will, it says that you will be fruitful in every good work, amen? Okay, and the fourth thing is what? You will increase in the knowledge of God. So if you want to increase in the knowledge of God, it also depends on knowing his will. So this is like a full circle. If you know his will, what will happen? You will walk worthy of him. You will be pleasing to him. You will be fruitful in every good work and you will keep increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. So that for so if you want to be seeing all of these aspects in your life, it is important for you to know God's will. And can every Believer know God's will for their life? Yes. So if you know God's will for your life, these are the fruits or this is the results of what you will see in your life, which we read in um, Colossians chapter 1, verses 10. Uh, verses, verse 10. Yes. Okay. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 2, verses 9 and 10. Can somebody read that, please? But as it is written, I has not seen nor hear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searching all things, yes, the deep things of God. Yes. So God has great things planned for our life. He has great purposes for our life. He's got a dream for our life. But you can know, how can you know God's plan and purpose for his life, for your life? The Holy Spirit reveals it to you. Okay. The Holy Spirit reveals it to you. Look at what uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16 says. For who has known the mind of Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. So Paul is saying, Who has known the mind of God? Or in other words, he's saying, Who has known the plans and the purposes of God? God. So what is the answer? Nobody, right? Nobody has known, can know the mind of God, but Paul does not stop there. He continues to say, but we have the mind of Christ. What does it mean? It means that, hey, we can know the plans and the thoughts and the purposes that God has for our lives. And how can we know the plans and the purposes that God has for our lives? How is it possible? Yes, the Holy Spirit reveals it to us. And because the Holy Spirit reveals to us, that is why Paul is saying that we can have the mind of Christ. Amen? Okay, so you have the mind of Christ. Why do you have the mind of Christ? Or how can you say you have the mind of Christ is because God reveals his plans, his will, his purpose for your life. So in any season of your life, okay, you can know God's plan and purpose and you can know it accurately. You can know it completely. You can know it clearly. Okay, that is very important. When God reveals his plan and purpose for your life in any season, he reveals it accurately, he reveals it completely, and he reveals it uh, clearly. So you can understand the will of God, and you can be filled with the knowledge of his will. Okay. Now, I want us to understand uh, this important truth that as God unfolds, his revelation of his plan for your life, 
the way he does it is very progressive. Okay, he does not say, okay, here, this is your plan for your next 50 years of your life. He doesn't do that because, you know, you will be like wondering, 50 years, what do I do? You know, I just want to know this season. I want to know next season. So God does not necessarily tell us everything that is going to happen the next 50 years from now. But he tells you what you need to know that is God, his plan and his purpose for this season of your life and what is coming up in the next season. Why does he reveal what is coming up in the next season? Okay, it'll be too overwhelming if he tells you the whole 50 years of your life. But why does he tell you, reveal to you about the next season of your life? Yes, to prepare. Thank you, Kushpu. Yes, to prepare for the next season of your life. To get ready for the next season of life. And God knows that itself is too much for us to handle. And that is enough. And so he takes us season by season and he prepares us for the next season and he launches us into the next season okay so we can know the heart and mind of god because the holy spirit reveals it to us and we have the mind of christ so you can declare this to yourself i have the mind of christ yes you can be excited about it you have the mind of christ imagine that yes can you say that i have the mind of christ why do you say you have the mind of Christ? Why do you have the mind of Christ? Because the Holy Spirit reveals his plans, his purposes for your life. Okay, And the way the Holy Spirit reveals God's plan and purpose for your life is very, very progressive. Okay, um, Look at what Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 says. Can somebody read Proverbs 4 18 please? But the path of... Path but the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines every ever brighter unto the perfect day. Amen. Thank you. You can pass the mic to others. Let them also read. So the Bible, what is the Bible saying? The path of the righteous is like? The path of the righteous is like? Sun. It doesn't mean that the righteous is like a sun. It means that the part of the righteous is like he's using a comparison he's using a simile who is righteous are you righteous yes yes you've been made righteous in christ jesus amen okay so all of you are righteous so how is your path the path of the righteous is like that means simile it's a comparison it's like the sun now what does it mean the path of the righteous is like that sh sun that shines brighter and brighter unto perfect day. What does it mean? When the sun rises in the early in the morning, about 3 30, 4 o'clock, is it bright as it's like in the noonday? No. You can see power, very little, right? And as it keeps coming up, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you can see a little more clearer. You can see a little more clearer. By noonday, the sun is shining in all its glorious splendor and everything around you is very visible and clear okay so the same way you know uh in the same way is like you know um uh, sometimes we do not understand god's will for our life we get upset about it you can't see everything so clearly but you have this assurance that even as you take those little little steps of faith that things will become even more clearer, things will be even more evident, right? I'll give you an example. Like for Abraham, God told him, what did God tell Abraham? Leave your household and go to the land I am showing you, okay? So was it like everything was very clear and bright and uh, uh, the path was very clear for uh, Abraham? No, it was like, maybe it was like 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the morning when the sun is just peeking out, right? Just little visibility. All Abraham knew was, just leave your father's household and go to the land I am 
showing you. God did not tell him which land. He did not tell him the route he had to take. He did not tell him how he need to go, uh, needs to go, the journey, how many days it will take, nothing. He gave him no other clues. So the same way in our lives, when God tells you something, don't be upset that you have don't have the clear entire picture. Some of us say, God, show me everything, then only I will step into it. Okay, you want me to go to do ministry? You need to tell me which Bible college, how many years, you know, um, uh, uh, what will I do after that? Where will I go and minister? Show me everything. Then only I will step, take the first step. But God does not work like that, you know, uh, with us. Sometimes it's just take the first step, then he'll show you the second step. Then he will show you maybe three, four steps that you can leap. And then he will show you maybe the whole thing in a very clearer way so the path of the righteous is like the shining sun which gets brighter and brighter and the visibility is more clearer as the sun comes out and it is noonday okay so um you need to all you need to do is just step out in faith okay so if you ask abraham you know abraham would have told you hey i don't know where i'm going i don't know the place of my inheritance all I know is what I'm acting on is God told me, leave your father's household and go and I will show you the land. All that is what I know. God is going to lead me and, you know, he's going to take me to my place of inheritance. So if, if Abraham was going to speak, he would have just said this, right? Now look at Genesis chapter 24, verse 27. What does, uh, uh, we have an example of Eliezer, Abraham's servant. Can somebody read that, please? And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who has not forsaken his mercy and his truth toward my master. As for me, being on the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Master's brethren. Amen. So here, it's, uh, it's talking about... Uh, is the narrative here is about Eliezer, Abraham's servant. Now he was given a big responsibility. What was the responsibility he was given? Find a good wife for Abraham's son, Isaac. Okay. And so what does he do? Now he has this huge big responsibility. And uh, he tells God, you know, that you have to lead me on the Way. You have to show me. And this is his witness or his testimony. He's saying, blessed be the Lord God, the master of Abraham, who's not forsaken his mercy and truth. And he says, be on the way. The Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. So he did not know where God is leading him. God did not tell him whose house he's going to go, where he's going to find Isaac's uh, a bride for Isaac. But he just trusts God. He just leaves everything into the Lord's hand and he just goes. And he says, even as he was going on his way, the Lord led him. Okay. So that is what God uh, looks for each one of us. Sometimes we can't just sit back and say, God, give me everything. And then only I will step out. You know, God will say, just, hey, take the first step. It might be a very small step might be not very clear but he's asking you to take that step and then he will reveal things to you okay so even as we journey on in life you know god will unfold things new things that he's going to bring about in our lives that we never thought of okay he will put those beginnings in our hearts he will speak it in our hearts and we just need to keep taking those steps we need to keep praying, believing, and, you know, God will lead us even as we take those steps. Amen? Okay, so that is how God works, okay? So um, we're going to begin to look at, you know, um, to recognize how basically God guides us and leads us uh, and how uh, we can know God's will and plan for our lives okay so there are nine guideposts that we are going to talk about um and um uh the list is already there as i mentioned on page number five right okay yeah page number five okay 
So we will look at uh, each of these guideposts. Um, now, as I go, as we go through each of these guideposts, I want each of you to spend time to analyze, to think, uh, to examine in your own lives. Okay, to see, you know, where when we are talking about these guideposts, to see how it is uh, working in your life, how is God working, how is God moving in your life, you know, just take time to analyze, to think, to examine your own life, so that by the time we complete uh, studying all of these nine goal guideposts, you should be at least in a position where you have a general sense of direction, okay, to say, hey, I know, I believe that this is where God is taking me in, life okay all of you with me yes okay so the first thing any questions so far any questions so we established that god has a plan and a purpose that he reveals it to us he reveals it to the uh, to the holy spirit and uh, because of that we can say we have the mind of christ and we also saw that you know we can pray and ask god to fill us with an understanding of his will okay and what happens when we are walking or we know or we have an understanding of his will is uh, colossians chapter 1 verse 10 says that we will walk worthy of him fully pleasing to him bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of god okay any questions you have a question do you have a question can you please take the mic quickly and ask please Can Holy Spirit God reveals uh, His will to only the spiritual persons or any other persons? Can the Holy Spirit reveal it to um, some other person or the, only the believer? Huh? Yes. Who has only the Holy Spirit can reveal the heart and mind of God, and those who have the Holy Spirit, those who uh, know about the person and the work of the Holy Spirit, those who are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, they can understand. So even if you have the Holy Spirit and you're not sensitive to listen to the Holy Spirit, you can miss hearing the Holy Spirit. But um, does God have plan and purposes for unbelievers? Yes. Can God speak to them as well? Yes, he can speak to them. Yes. How does the Holy Spirit reveal God's plan to us? Okay, that we will study um, in, um, uh, in this lesson. And you will also study that in the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He's your guide. The Holy Spirit, basically, uh, you, what you need to do is you need to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Okay, you need to commune with the Holy Spirit. Um, and there is one of the pointers here, one of the guideposts says, recognize the leading of God's Spirit. We will talk about it uh, then. And also that the Holy Spirit teaches us, but we need to be sensitive and we will look at things. We will study it in the eighth guide post that is there. Um, and also we will study it in the next publication, Receiving God's Guidance. We will talk in detail about um, how the Holy Spirit reveals God's will to our lives. Yes, Sahani, you have your hand up. Oh, sorry, Shani. But I was, um, I had a question. I was a little bit confused because the gentleman asked the question about, um, I do believe he was saying, who do you reveal? Um, I can't remember about, can God reveal? Uh, sorry, the, I, can't, uh, I can't understand what you're saying. It would be helpful if you can please, um, uh, keep the mic closer and if you can, you know, um, speak a little louder so I can uh, understand what you're saying, please, if that's okay. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What I was asking, it was a question the gentleman asked. He was asking, who does God reveal, um, who does God reveal the will to? And you were saying he can reveal to a believer and unbeliever, but you were saying that it was something you were saying about the Holy Spirit. I was kind of confused because you were saying that God can reveal the will to the believer and the unbeliever, but then you were saying that only people who have the Holy Spirit, and I know that's believers, so that's why I was kind of confused. I just need a clarification on that. 
Oh, so you're going back to the question that one of our in-person students asked us. And you're saying that, um, okay, we said that, yeah, the Holy Spirit re uh, reveals it to a believer, but the Holy Spirit, but God can also reveal it to an unbeliever. He can, uh, yeah, so the how is an un unbeliever guided, you know, um, just through his conscience, through the reason, um, God will just stir up his heart uh, to know, uh, to understand, um, and also to see the skills and the talents he has. Um, so these are the ways that an unbeliever will know. But specifically, uh, you know, a believer can understand the heart and the mind and the will, the details of it, because the Holy Spirit dwells in a believer and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to us. But even if a believer, you know, is not somebody who's sensitive to hearing the Holy Spirit, he can miss out on the details the holy spirit will be communicating the heart and the mind and the will of god but a believer will not be able to comprehend or understand because they basically are not communicating or communing or having fellowship with the holy spirit okay thank you that clarifies it thank you yes okay so we'll move on um uh, so we look at the first guide post okay um now, the first guidepost, what is the first guidepost? Sorry? What is the first guidepost? Recognize the general teaching and the instruction of God's word. Okay? Now, we need to know something that God will never lead us or God will never ask us to do anything that is contrary to his word so if you sense something god is telling you or you're hearing something that you think god is speaking to you or you feel a stirring in your heart that you sense god is moving you to do something it's important for you to go back to his word okay whatever god is speaking to you in any season in any point of life or any time in life he will confirm it through his word okay so we must understand that you know god never leads us contrary to his written word okay so if you want to validate can you give that mic here please to vinay give the mic to vinay give it to vinay please yeah so if you want to know and understand god's will for your life okay or you want to know what God is doing, one way he speaks is through his word and he will never go contrary uh, to his word. He will never ask us to do anything that he has already not revealed in his word. Yes. Ma'am, once I was praying to uh, for some unsaved person mm -hmm. because that person was actually troubling me a lot. And uh, the verse that came to me was uh, that person was actually um, mocking my God, a mocking Christ. So I didn't know I was still continuing to pray. And then I got the verse, just, um, you know, there is a verse which says, you know, dust the thing, uh, thing and so ignore her. Yeah, so I was like, is this voice from God? Because God gives the time till the end for the person to be saved. So I was a little confused. But the voice came just like, uh, you know, same way. It was, I couldn't discern whether it's Holy Spirit or, you know, my own thought. or, But it was very confusing. Okay, so you say, you know, uh, because we have to confirm with the word of God, right? Anything. Yes, so there is that scripture verse in says, you know, when it's son, you dust the, uh, the dust off your feet, you have not, what does it mean? You don't have anything to do with that person. Basically means, you know, just dust the uh, dirt off your feet. It be, uh, but does God speak like that? Like, we still have so much time to save that person. Yes, he is a God who has, uh, uh, see, that is what we need to understand, that in the context of what he is saying. So when you receive a word like this, you need to understand in the context, the entire context of God's nature of who God is and how he works. And you need to see, always you need to interpret scripture in the light of the rest of scripture. Okay. So what you're saying is you're interpreting that scripture which you receive in the light of the rest of scripture, which is very good. So you're saying that how can I just dust my, the dust of my feet is like saying, 
hey, like you go yeah. to hell, you know, yeah. something similar to that. But it's not what God's heart is. Yes. So we know God's heart is a redemptive heart. heart. Okay, so even Paul is writing to the church at Rome and the, the Romans chapter two, he says, you know, God is, is a God who judges. Okay, He's a just God. And because he's a just God, he judges and, and sin is inexcusable in his sight. But then he says, you know, the, the goodness of God leads to repentance. So he's saying, hey, if you all are, you know, having all of these sins, which he, he, he writes in Romans chapter 1 in, the, in verse 32, 30, 31, 32, he's stating all of the sins that are there because people have gone away from the word of God, from the truth, that diverse from the truth. And then he's saying that, you know, there is a dreadful punishment, eternal death for you, you know. And even those who uh, advocate uh, homosexuality and all that, he's talking that in that passage in Romans chapter 1. They also will be put to, uh, you know, they are condemned. They also will suffer eternal death. And then he comes on to chapter 2 and he's again talking about the wrath of God. But then he goes on to say very beautifully that the goodness of God leads to repentance. Yes, he's a just God. He will judge sin. But he's also a good, gracious, merciful, compassionate God. You know, um, uh, you know for, he's long-suffering forbearing that is what he says in romans chapter 2 in the in the first few verses he's good merciful long suffering forbearing and you know he says the goodness of god leads to repentance so when he is saying dust the uh, you know dust off your feet he's basically saying don't have anything to do with that person because you're saying you were doing some business deal or something don't deal in business issues with that person don't join with that person. Don't relate with that person. But it doesn't mean that you stop praying for that person. Because you know that it's God's good, pleasing, and perfect will that all men be saved and come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So does God want you to pray for his or her salvation? Yes, to the very end. Yes. So you continue to do that. So you need to always see things in the context of God's nature and the entirety of Scripture. Because you can't just take one scripture out of context and interpret it. You always have to interpret it in the light of other scripture passages. Okay, so uh, we we'll, we look at the first um, C uh, the uh, guidepost. We need to recognize God, general teaching and instruction in God's word. Okay, so God can never lead us in a way that contradicts His written scripture okay look at what second timothy chapter 3 verses 16 and 17 says ladies can you please read that it's there in your books page number 10 please all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work Amen. Okay, so Bhagya, I will look at your question during the uh, break and then I will answer it after the break. Is that fine? Okay, thank you. So all scripture is God, breathe, is inspired by God. That means it is something that is, you know, um, is spoken by God, is inspired by God and is useful for what? It's useful for what? For doctrine, what is meaning of doctrine? Ah, teaching. Basically, doctrine is teaching or something that you teach. Okay, it's profit. It's profitable or good for teaching, for reproof. What is the meaning of reproof? Basically, it gives you proof, right? You want proof for anything that you, any prophecy that you hear, any voice that you hear, any vision you see. You want proof that this is God speaking to you. You need to go to God's word for correction. God's word corrects us and instructs us in righteousness. What does it mean, instructs us in righteousness? Guides us, leads us, teaches us in the right way that we need to go. So when, what happens when a man or a woman is led by scripture? What happens? Yes, that man or woman is complete and thoroughly equipped for every good work amen okay so you see you know god will instruct us through his word in the way that we need to walk in the parts of righteousness he will lead us in the way that we need to go 
So God's word is the starting point. God's word should be the starting point for anything and everything that you want to do. You know, in my life, when I have a question, when I have a doubt, when I have, um, you know, a decision that I need to make, um, you know, when uh, I know what step I need to do next, whether it's ministry, family, personal life, whatever it is, I have never run to any pastors or anyone to pray for me. It's not, I'm not saying that's not right. It's not wrong. God uses men and women of God and we can do that. But I've always just prayed and God has spoken to me through his word. I have received every answer for every situation, whether it's small, big, whether it's a um, uh, significant, insignificant decision, even if it's something really funny, everything is, you know, um, the answer I have received from God's word. And God's word is life. God's word is truth. God's word trains us and guides us in righteousness. So God's word should be your starting point. Amen. Look at what Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says. Can somebody read that please? Romans 12 2. And, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Okay. So... What must we do to what must we do here? What is Paul saying we must do here? We must renew our mind. When our mind is renewed, what happens? We can prove what is the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of. God. Now, some of you are saying, hey, I cannot know what God's will for my life. God is speaking to you, but you might not be able to hear it because maybe you are not responding to the Holy Spirit. You're not fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. You're not in tune with the Holy Spirit. You're not spiritually intimate with the Holy Spirit. So maybe that's one reason why you're not able to hear God's will or plan for your life in any given season. And also here, the Bible says that if you need to know what's God's will for your life. What is God's will for your life? It is good, acceptable, and perfect. Amen? Can we say an amen to that? God's will for your life is good, it's acceptable, and it is perfect. No flaws, no mistakes. Okay? So how can you prove God's perfect, good, perfect, uh, acceptable will for your life? Is you need to have a renewed mind. Okay, now this word prove, you know, here, do not be, uh, be, that you may prove what is good. So the word prove here, the Greek word means to test. Okay, and it's often used, this word is used for testing metal through fire. Okay, so when you put metal through fire, what happens? You can understand the the density, the quality, the purity of that metal, okay, and how good it is, the quality of it. So here is saying that, you know, uh, we, we need to explore, we need to investigate, and we need to examine God's will for our life. Yes, God has a will for our life. He reveals his will to our life, to the Holy Spirit. And that is why we have the mind of Christ. But there is some responsibility that we have. We have a part to play. Okay. So I told you that, you know, God, in, in, in chapter one, we study that when we, we need to know God's will for our lives, we need to cooperate with God. Okay. Only when we cooperate can we understand. So how do we cooperate with God? First of all, we need to fellowship, commune with the Holy Spirit. We have to have the mind of Christ. Then we need to also have a renewed mind and we need to learn how to explore, investigate and examine. Okay. So God tells us that, hey, I want you to prove I want you to examine, I want you to test what is my good, acceptable, and perfect will. Okay. So we have a part to play. And for us to know God's good, acceptable, and perfect will, we need to have a renewed 
mind. Only a renewed mind can be able to prove, test and examine if it is God's will for your life or it's your own will or Satan or you know, people's will or and if this will for your life is God's good, acceptable and perfect will. Now what is the meaning of a renewed mind? What's the meaning of a renewed mind? Repentance. Sorry? Yeah. Clear mind. Re renewed. Renewed by the word of God, okay? Sorry, somebody was saying something. The word itself says renewed is a new mind. Renew, right? When we are born again, we have the nature of the fallen man, right? But when we are born again, sorry, when we are the old man, we have the nature of the fallen man. But when we are born again, we have the nature of God that flows in us, okay? So our spirits are born again, but the word of God says that we need to renew our minds because our mind and our souls are still so inclined to the old nature, the old man. And that is why we need to continue renewing our mind. So what is the meaning of a renewed mind? A renewed mind basically means a mind that is learning to take on the higher thoughts and the higher ways of God. Okay, I'll repeat that again. I don't think it's in your uh, uh, book. Okay, so a renewed mind is a mind that is learning to take on the higher thoughts and the higher ways of God. Okay, how do we know this? Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 11. What does it say? It's a very familiar passage. Isaiah 55, 8 to 11. Can somebody read that please? God says, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts okay so god is saying hey my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts but does god wants us to walk in his ways does god want us to take on his thoughts yes and how can we do that through a renewed mind Okay, so renewed mind is taking on the high ways, it is taking on the higher thoughts, the higher ways of God. So if you want to accurately prove, examine and determine what's good, acceptable and pleasing will of God for your life, then you have to, you know, have a renewed mind. The scripture is Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 to 11. 8 to 11. Anyone has opened that? Isaiah 55, 8 to 11. Can somebody read that, please? For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Amen. Okay, so that is a renewed mind. A renewed mind is taking on the higher thoughts and the plans of God. Okay. We'll stop here and meet after the break.